Hi guys and welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well, we've got a little custom drop down menu for you today. We've got this little blue button on the right hand side. It's in fixed position. So if we roll up and down, it's going to stay where it is right there. When I hover over it, it's going to expand to reveal a nice little drop down menu. Now we've done this before in the past, building it manually. I'm actually going to use a free plugin for this today. And I'll put the link below the video, obviously. Once you get here, we're going to be using Divi Supreme Modules Lite. Simply click on the button. It'll take you to this page, which tells you all about it. There's 20 free modules with this, and there's some great modules there. If you go down to the bottom of the page, right at the bottom there, you'll find a free download button. Okay, well, let's get started. I'm going to enable the Visual Builder so we can build on the front end. Once enabled, I'm going to go down. I'm going to hit the little purple button. I'm going to go to wireframe mode because I'm using fixed position with my menu there. It's just a little easier for me to get to it in back end or wireframe mode here. And there's the little menu module. I'm going to delete the whole row that it's in. And we can flip back to desktop mode. And there we are. We've got our little button disappeared there and let's start from scratch so I'm going to add a new row little green button to add a row I'm going to use a single column because we're going to be using fixed position and we're just going to be putting the simple one module in there Divi comes as standard with all these light gray modules plenty enough to build just about any site when you've downloaded and installed the free Divi Supreme Light module here are all the modules that we get with it and like I said earlier there's about 20 of them I'm going to use the Divi Supreme mod menu module right here. So I'm simply going to click on it and it's opened up. And at the moment, it's prompting us to give it a menu title. You don't have to put a title in there, but if you do, that's where you want to put it. Now to choose your menu, you can choose it right here. And remember, it's only going to show the menus. If I go to the dashboard a moment, it's only going to show the menus that you have saved under appearance and menus here. So make sure you've got some menus saved there before you actually do it. I've got several here, top, secondary. So make sure you've got a menu created and saved or it will not show up in our menu right here. I'm gonna go ahead and use my top menu right there, which is fine. If you wanna give it a background, you can do so below. And you've got color, gradient, background image, background video, background pattern or background mask. Just going to give it a simple blue background for mine today. There we go. And as you can see, it's a whole column there that fills that section. We're going to do a little customization on that, make it the size that we want it. Okay, well, let's move on to our design now, the next tab up here. Layout wise, vertical's absolutely fine. Here's title styling right here. Bottom gap's fine. I think I'm going to make it uppercase and Divi as usual has a crazy amount of fonts. They really do have a huge amount of fonts for you to choose from. To audition one, just simply hover over it. It'll give you an example. I'm going to go ahead and stick to the default for mine today, but I have made it uppercase. I'm going to pop it in the middle, but then I'm going to shrink this thing down in a minute. It's actually disappeared to the middle right there. I'm going to make it white in color. I'm not going to change the text size or anything like that. You can customize it to your heart's content down here. And let's do similar for our little menu. So here's our menu. Menu link color. I'm going to make everything white just for simplicity. It's up to you how you do this, obviously. At the moment, it's a sort of bulleted style list with the dots there. I really don't want any dots on mine. So list style type. It says disk at the moment. I'm going to flip mine to none. There we go. Okay, and we've got left spacing here. I'll leave that for a minute. What I'm going to do is use a bit of padding in a minute when I've made it the size I want to make it the way that I want. And again, you can choose any font you want for this and style it and colorize it how you wish. Same with the sub menu if you have sub menu items. Okay, well, that's pretty much all I want to do with that. So let's go down to our sizing now. I'm going to shrink it down a bit. So I'm going to go to sizing. Here's the width. 
I don't want mine to be perhaps 200 pixels wide, depending on the length of your actual links here. Put in whatever works for you, obviously. So width, I'm gonna type in 200 px for pixels. As you can see, that's shrunk down. Might even shrink it back to maybe 150. Let's try 150. Yeah, that'll work. Now I just want to add a bit of spacing all around so it's not up against the top and the sides there. So that's fine. Module alignment, I'm going to make sure it's on the left because when I put it up here, I want it to be on the left of our little row that it's in there. Now height wise, this is where the fun starts. I'm going to come back to this in a minute because we're going to set a hover state. So I'm going to go down and do my spacing first. And I want to add a bit of padding. So let's say 20 top and bottom. Just put in the 20, it'll put in the pixels for you. Hit the chain, it'll do the other side, the opposite side. And left, I want it to kind of line up with that. I don't want to center align them, but I want the left hand edge to be sort of kind of in line with my menu there. So let's try 30 either side there. Yeah, that's about right. I could up it just slightly. There we go. I'm just using the little arrows to increment up by a pixel at a time there. Yeah, okay, that's gonna work for me. Now we can go back and fix our height to create our little hover effect. So I'm gonna close up spacing. I'm gonna go back into sizing just above. So if we grab our little height slider now and start pulling it to the left, you'll see it shrink down when it gets small enough. And if it doesn't go down all the way for you, you can just type in a value here. Let's maybe try 50 and take it from there. That's okay, but I want similar space top and bottom. So I'm gonna increment up and down with the little arrows here again until we get the size we want. There we go, just like that. Now let's set a hover state. So when we hover over it, it re reveals the rest of this. And I don't know if you can make that out there. The actual menu items are still visible down here. We'll fix that in a minute with overflow. So this is common to most Divi modules. If you hover over the dark writing, you'll see some little icons appear. Go to the thing that you want to affect, in our case, the height. Click on a little arrow if there is one. Now desktop, we want it to be 56 pixels tall, which is fine. When we hover over it, we want it to reveal the whole of the rest of the menu. So let's just slide this up until we've got as much as we want there. A little too much. Something like that works for me. Obviously you, you do what works for you. 190, well let's just round it up to 200 will probably work fine. Yeah, that's fine. Great. So when we're hovering over it, we're gonna see the whole thing like this. And when we're not, we're just gonna see the menu title there. Fantastic. Okay, just to finish off, and this is obviously optional new, I don't wanna see these things spilling out of there. Now on the back end, you'll probably still see them, but on the front end, when I get take away the overflow, they'll not be visible. So let's go over to the advanced tab, down to visibility. Here you're gonna find horizontal and vertical overflow. I'm gonna turn both of those to off or hidden. And as you can see, or as you can't see, that's hidden in a thing that's falling out of the bottom of here, which is great. Occasionally on back end mode, you'll still see it, but on the front end, you won't. Great, so we made it the size we want. We made it do what we want. If you wanna speed up or slow down the time it takes to go to the full length, by default, that's 300 milliseconds, which is pretty quick, just under a third of a second. If you wanna slow it down or speed it up, let's just close down our visibility. Still on the advanced tab, you've got transitions just under visibility. There's the default 300. To slow it down, drag it to the right. To speed it up, drag it to the left. I'm happy with mine to be the default today. Don't want any delay. Want it to happen as soon as the mouse hits it. Transition speed curves, absolutely fine. Ease works perfectly for this. These are all subtly different. Some will work better than others in certain situations, so check them out, but I'm gonna leave mine on ease today. Okay. 
And as I mentioned earlier, just to finish off, I want to put this in a fixed position so it stays where it is. So I'm going to go into the row, the little green tab for the row, blue tab for a section, dark tab for a module. So I'm going to go into the row itself, go over to advanced. If we roll down, we've got a position here. Now, default is relative. I'm going to make mine fixed and it'll disappear when I click on this. It hasn't actually disappeared. It's up under our menu on the top left hand side here. We've got a little grid underneath. If you want to put it in the middle, you can put it there, down the bottom there, etc. And it looks like our little menu might be getting lost under this section below, which we don't want. So we want to make sure it's got a high Z index. So I'm going to put it top left. If we roll down just a little bit, here's the vertical offset. It's under our menu at the moment. So I want to bring it down. There it is. About there is fine. Just want to bring it away from the side slightly. Not quite as much as that. Maybe something like that. And the Z index. Now what the Z index is, is the Z index dictates what things appear on top of other things. So if this image had a Z index of one and this had a Z index of two, this would always appear on the top of this. If I roll down, it's getting lost underneath our little section underneath there. We want it to be on top at all times. So let's try sliding up our Z index on here. And as you can see, it's now on top. And if you have trouble, just go into the row that's going on top and make sure it's got a lower number than the one that you want to place on top, if that makes sense. Great. So if you've done everything correctly now, this should all be working for us. Let's save our changes here. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And let's exit the Visual Builder. And there it is, there's our little menu. When I hover over it, it's gonna drop round down to reveal our little menu items right there. When we let go of it, it's gonna pop back up. When we roll down the page, it's gonna remain on top of everything else, which is what we want. So there you go, guys. There's a little custom fixed position drop down menu. Really easy to do, and like I say, we've been using the free Divi Supreme Lite module for the initial setup on this today. If you don't want to add a plugin, I'll put the link below to the manual version of this build. And it's pretty simple. We, we can build it with a text module, but the free plugin gives you a few extra options there. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.